Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Hey, welcome back everyone. You are watching exclusive coverage of Oracle Open World here on Howard Street where they're closing down San Francisco for 60,000 Oracle Open World attendees. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles, joining my co-host Brian Gracely, our cloud and applications analyst at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Steve Miranda, executive vice president of application development at Oracle on the product side. Great to have you in the Cube. Thanks for spending the time to come by. Thanks for having me, my pleasure. Um, you know, we love, the range of, of leadership and technology that Oracle's pushing out there, from under the hood, engineered systems, yeah. all the way up to stack to pass with cloud, and then ultimately the application market is exploding. Obviously you, you've been very successful in the application business in the software, what, 30 years um, Oracle has been. So, but now we are in a new era. Client servers kind of, kind of had its time, that chap is closed, it's the cloud time, it's modern infrastructure, sure. standing stuff up, horizontally scalable, open source, vertically integrated solutions. Where is the app market today and how is it changing? Because this is a huge opportunity for the marketplace, not only for Oracle, sure. to win with your apps, sure. but there's an ecosystem out there, there's ISVs, slew of opportunity. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I think you're right, so first off, thanks for having me. Uh, secondly, you mentioned the 60,000 people here. One, one of the most exciting things for me is that being at Oracle about 20 years, is we've taken a number of the customers who are here throughout many of those phases, and even before client server, even all the way back, uh, you know, started with us 20 years ago, the internet. Uh, so now with, with the advent of cloud-based applications, as was said in the keynotes the last couple days, we feel like we're just at the beginning, getting towards the middle. And I think what we have to offer is, one is, we now for the first time have a comprehensive suite of applications, so that customers, while you're right that there's an ecosystem around it, you can get your core systems all provided and all integrated from one single platform that you can extend and add off of. And the second thing that we're very excited about is I think once you have have applications in the cloud, not only do you get the speed of innovation more quickly from ourselves or other, other vendors, from our ISV partners and the ecosystem you talked about, but also you have the opportunity to do things that you never could do before in applications. And when you couple data as a service, kind of the, all the data we have uh, just on the internet to, come to your cloud applications, you're able to do things that you never could do in an on-premise or client server or any other applications that they're around. You know, during the client server era, a lot of wealth was created, a lot of value was created, and uh, but that, it looked like a siloed stack. Okay, here's a new company launch, gets funding, they build an app, and it's you know, ERP, CRM, all these different yeah. uh, points, yeah. and it's a company. Yeah. Now you have a platform that's more of an enabling technology. Sure. So now you, Oracle obviously has some really solid apps, but now you could have some startup out there build on the platform or an ISV do some integration work with the cloud right. as changing the dynamic. Where is that wealth creation opportunity in your mind? Is there enough people out there? Is there more coming? What's your vision on that? Because this is what people are looking for, more value faster. Yeah. Well, I think in technology there's always lots of waves like this where there's discussion on a boom or bust or bubbles and things like that. I tend to look at how we can generate value for our customers. And I think from our standpoint, it's the fact that we can deliver that platform platform and build the application on top of that platform, but at the same time allow customers or ISVs extend on the very same platform, not only that we use to build our application, but that our customers have been using for years and years. So you see all the people here who've been building on the Oracle platform, us bringing that to the cloud allows us to deliver better value to our customers to the extent they use ours, and also to the extent they use ISV or partner applications as well. So let's get to some news. What's the news for you, your group here at Oracle Open World? Obviously we heard app build, is that part of the group? I mean, I mean the cloud is about standing stuff up fast, sure. iteration, what are you guys launching, what's the tsunami of product sure. announcements? Okay, so really in the application space, I had to think of the three different product pillars, or three different product areas. So first off, in ERP, so there's two major announcements. First and foremost, we're thrilled with the progress we've made in ERP cloud. We have over 1,300 customers in ERP cloud now. Many of those are speaking here on our behalf today. But in addition to that, that was financials, procurement, inventory. We've added a full supply chain manufacturing. So the first time you have a complete suite of ERP in the cloud, and a complete suite beta in those open standards and with over a thousand customers uh, from the largest companies in the world down to small and medium businesses. The second pillar is in our CRM space. So we made tremendous investments in marketing, service, and Salesforce automation. And this year we've announced brand new verticals, so uh, communication capabilities for telcos, you have CPG capabilities, and partner relationship management for high tech manufacturers. And again, you saw some of the customers speak on our behalf there. And finally, HCM. So again, we made tremendous progress, not only in our talent management cloud, uh, but in our HCM core cloud. So we've announced at this conference over a thousand 
core HCM, so these are core HR, payroll, benefits customers, over 1,000 in the cloud today, and we've announced a brand new learning management system, which is the first to market in the cloud and quite exciting, integrated with HR. Yep. So, you know, let's take ERP as an example, right? Yep. Customers have put a ton of resources into customizing it, building it around their yeah. business, their process. Yeah. How, do you, how do you move those processes into an ERP cloud? How do, how do you know about what the customer's done to customize that? Well, so ironically enough, that has been one of the uh, challenges that our customers have on premise, is that once you customize the product, it was very difficult to take care of the ongoing investment that we were making, because you had to either undo that customization or redo the customization. What we've done in the cloud is we allow the customer to extend the application through our platform, just as John was talking about earlier, either through an ISV or themselves, native so that you can get the seamless upgrade that the cloud provides without having to redo or undo those customizations. And what we found is that the majority of our customers did that ERP deployment 15, 20, 25 years ago, I mean pre-Y2K, kind of first ERP. So what many customers are doing is they're using this movement to the cloud as an opportunity to modernize business processes. You hear a lot of talk about the digital, the digitization of the economy, uh, and they're using that as an opportunity to do away with a lot of those customizations they have in the past and really make a modern platform move going forward. It's interesting, the consolidation message you kind of mentioned, I'll just say consolidation. IT has always been under the pressure of consolidating down, but sure. they're under a lot of pressure now to drive top line revenue growth, right? So the cloud is very enticing. Sure. The economics are phenomenal, time to value is phenomenal. So I got to ask you the hard question, why should customers choose Oracle Cloud? Okay. And why should they trust Oracle? Okay, well, so in the cloud uh, arena, customers should choose Oracle Cloud because it enables them for the first time to have a complete suite of applications that innovate very quickly at cloud speed. So you're not going to get stuck and you have the ability to extend and personalize the application one. Why should you trust Oracle? Look, we've got a long track record of taking customers to the next generation of technology. You said it yourself. We have customers here, and I'll go even farther back. I started with Oracle. We were green screen applications. The same customers went from green screen to client server to internet deployed. Before K and now, RAM. Now, now yeah. terabytes it, in it, memory. It, it, now you have that on, uh, more than that on your phone, right? Uh, so now we've had customers all the way to the cloud-based deployment, and we've enabled them to not only run the core of their business in the cloud very successfully and very efficiently, but they can also innovate around the edges either with our platform, with our applications, or with ISV applications. And so that, that flexibility to drive the core, have what you have all in one shop, and then goes without saying, I think we have the brand reputation of the most secure technology stack and secure service, and in today's environment with the cloud, it's top of mind to all customers looking to move. Yeah, the security thing is a gem that's not, to me, not being amplified enough. It's really one of the sweet uh, things in the show that I'm seeing, end-to-end -end encryption is phenomenal. Uh, I got to ask you um, uh, a different question, which is, from a customer standpoint, they look at Oracle, they say, okay, um, we, and we recognize that digital transformation is obviously happening. It's a huge opportunity to drive more value, faster time to revenue. You've been through, you said 20 years, multiple ways of innovation. So two questions, what is your personal learnings that you've seen in those conversations with customers, those journeys? What, what would you share that's been magnified in this wave that's different and or the same? And two, what are the top conversations you're having with customers in this journey? Okay, I think you did it in three, you said two, but let me try to okay. keep me on. I sometimes do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> take, so, take your choice. Yeah, so, uh, you know, what's fascinating with all the changes is I think that in every wave that we've gone through, there's always this, uh, and it's been a different concern on, well, we, we can't move off the green screen because the, the, the mouse is going to make things too slow. Well, we can't move off client server because the internet's not going to really scale. Well, we can't move off you know, on-premise applications because there's security or other uh, concerns. And every single time, the changes come much faster than any of us anticipated when we're kind of in the middle and the throes of the change. The second thing is, as you, get, you start that change, it starts off with niche competitors in every single spot. Uh, because it's brand new, it's brand new technology, people come out with niches, and you soon find out that actually you need innovation in certain parts to drive value to the enterprise you said, but there's a whole host of applications that if you have a best in class but integrated set of applications, a suite of applications that's secure really comes to the fore. And that's where we think our strong suit is as you move forward to the So cloud. in this wave, integration seems to be the big thing. Integrated platforms, integrated, security, integrated stacks, yeah. integrated cloud, that seems to be the hot button. Sure, and I mean, I would not I would invite everybody to take a look at our applications because we do think they're a best in class in each area. We have over $5 billion investment in R&D, <laughs> so we think we can bring best of both worlds. Best in class applications, but integrated applications. And in fact, a number of the folks you're talking to today and over the next couple days lead up the various uh, elements. And I think you'll find that you have best in class HR, best in class CRM, best in class HCM, or ERP, but in a collected suite as you choose to deploy it. Uh, 
during the first keynote, Sunday night, Larry talked about sort of this ex, you know, new vision you guys have around UI, yeah. around how, what, what it looks like. Yeah. What are you guys having to do? I mean, the, you know, the devices are changing, the user yeah. experience, people are ex yeah. expecting simpler, not yeah. complicated. Yeah. What are you doing in that space? Well, I think it's twofold. I think the, the, the word we try to use is contemporary because there's no such thing. The UI, especially these days, never stops. Yeah. So to stay Evolving. contemporary, you have to be set up with an infrastructure that's going to allow you to change every year very, very quickly and stay up with what people expect. And so we are an enterprise application vendor, uh, but we still have to uh, stay up to speed with the user interface paradigms and devices that people expect on their mobile devices or on their tablet devices, whatever the device of the day is. We have to stay up with social. So if people expect to interact with Twitter or with Facebook or uh, with Instagram for things, you have to make sure that your user interface is what people expect. And so we try to keep it contemporary. The way we do that is again, through our technology stack, which is enables to operate in a very declarative mode and gives us the speed of innovation. And when you couple that with the cloud, we're able to take customers through upgrades through those innovations so they have a contemporary, modern looking UI. Yeah. This is, comes back down to the whole conversation we had yesterday, Brian, around tools. Yeah. Tools are, it's a booming tool market. Yeah. A lot of tools out there, features if you will. And some people are making money on it, some startup, self-funded, lifestyle business, whether it's cash flow business, whatever you want to call it. So there's a boom in the tool market. So with that going on, you got you to look at the, the 20 mile stair as, as EVP. Um, so I got to ask you the product roadmap question. What's the white space that you guys are looking at sure. and how are you guys growing both organically and inorganically? Certainly the M&A track record has been phenomenal with Oracle. I mean, Oracle Marketing Cloud team has done a phenomenal job. We talked to them last night. Yes. And obviously in other areas, you pick, you pick winners and you plug them into the machinery of Oracle. So talk about that dynamic uh, of, of the growth and the product white space opportunities sure. for Oracle that you want to fill and also you will your partner and then organic, inorganic growth. Sure. Well, we announced, uh, I went over earlier kind of the new announcement. So in supply chain management, manufacturing, we think there's a huge area in ERP untouched in, in the cloud. We think the global market in HR and in learning management is huge untouched. I think in CRM, there's a number of areas I can focus on. Since you called out marketing, I'll call out that. When you look at the assets we've, we've built in the data as a service to take activity that happens online in the web and do true targeted marketing, um, we think that's a huge area of growth for us. I mean, I'm sure when you booked your tickets to come out to, to stay in San Francisco, you started to see advertisements on your Twitter stream or on your Facebook page or on any website you went to about rental cars in San Francisco, hotels in San Francisco, everybody has that experience. It's very, very likely, depending on which sites you were using, that that was Oracle Data Cloud together with Oracle Marketing that's driving that marketing experience. And that really one-to-one -one touch marketing uh, is, is a whole new area that we think is very exciting and room for growth. And M&A, you guys looking more and more M&A Hey, what's your strategy there? It, with general, we, we, let me give it this way, yeah. Uh, we have a history of buying uh, best in class uh, uh, products and services where it fills a need for our customers and completes yeah. the suite. You got a very active corporate development department, really love, love to see that. Okay. So I got to ask you about, since you brought up the data as a service, one of the things that we love, we're very data driven here at SiliconANGLE on the Cube with yeah. Yvonne, is that's the center of the value proposition right now because you mentioned just the predictive analytics and some of the uh, retargeting and, and, and stuff that's going on with Marketing Cloud, but that's not just that application. Got Data's it. central to all applications. This seems to be the theme here yeah. at Oracle Open World kind of a subtext to the cloud message. Expand on this whole data theme. Is it a data layer? How are you looking at data? Obviously, you're a database business. Right. I mean, pretty well, key. Well, again, I, I think that ultimately, we're, we're at the beginnings of moving to the cloud computing. And then, I think that ultimately data, as I described in the marketing example, we have a chance to have the data underlying all of the applications. I mean, Internet of Things generally gets thought of as like devices and how do you, you know, do you turn the heater on at your home or, or do you turn the water up or down? Um, you know, that's, that's certainly one use. In enterprise applications, there's a world of data out there that's on the web for supply chain usage, for HR usage, for recruiting usage, that if you can take that data, and now that we're available in the cloud, you can really couple masses of data, you know, quite easily with the applications and drive better decisions and better experiences, even in the enterprise apps with data. What are the top conversations you're having with customers right now that are looking to go to the cloud? And what's your advice to them? Because they might say, hey, I'm buying into this. I love Oracle, we've been through the yeah. journeys before. Yeah. That, the new bridge needs to be crossed. What's the conversations like? And then what advice do you give them? It's really about using the opportunity to rethink your business process and modernize your business processes with the Oracle Cloud. And the advice is, is frankly, if they're not already started, to get started. And if they're already started, to go faster. Because we think it's a tremendous opportunity for business value. And we think that, again, and every time we've seen this change, you see this hesitancy for some reason, and you get past it very quickly. And the customers who come out the other end of the change first, yeah. who tend to be the early doctors, tend to thrive. Uh, and we feel very excited about our customers here going with us. So it's usually go yeah. or go faster. 
What are you excited about as you look down at the organization? You've got a lot of product teams, you've got a lot of engineering going on. Yeah. Uh, the application market is booming right now. I think it's going to even be phenomenal. I think we keep on doing some sizing on it, but it's still untapped. I think it's going to be a tsunami of great opportunities. What technologies are you personally excited about? Is it machine learning? We're hearing all this machine learning. There's a lot of great stuff. We've got processor yeah. in memory. we got end-to-end -end encryption on the chip with John Fowler's team. Yeah. What, is, what are you personally excited about? I'm you not know, asking you to pick a, your favorite child, but yeah, like, yeah, from exactly, your standpoint, exactly. you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. but pick one. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for your time. So, first, I got to answer. You know, I'm extremely proud of, of our entire development organization, my entire team. I mean, it, it's so great to come to a meeting like this, and you see customers everywhere who are like using your products every day and excited about your products going forward. I think, in general, I'll go back to the opportunity we have to drive real decisions across the board uh, through data. Um, and if you apply that to you know real world problems, and you apply it to our industry applications, uh, you know healthcare applications, other applications like that, I think it's phenomenal. I think that the industry, the technology industry, not just Oracle, not just enterprise applications, we can make connections in ways we couldn't make before. And I think it'll serve you know you know Oracle and our customers very good. And I think it'll serve everybody really good by driving that data and coming up with interesting applications that are used. See, my final question for you: uh, We heard uh, from top management in Oracle all week. We're going to disrupt ourselves. We take the offense. That's my words, but Oracle's words. We're going to disrupt our ourselves and take new territory. How would you summarize to customers and folks watching the, the key disruptive enabler for Oracle right now? What is that, that one disruptive enabler that's driving Oracle's thrusts into the future? Yeah, I, I don't really look at it as, uh, as, as we disrupt ourselves. I, I think our customers have demands of us for increasing speed and increasing capability to innovate. And I think that the cloud platform has allowed us to do that. So I think it, it's our customers in a, in a positive way. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier the customizations and how they do it, you know, our customers deal with, you know, bring us problems to how they keep up with their business and how they make the next business challenges to us. So I hate to use the word disruptive and customer yeah. because I use it in a positive sense. In an innovative think, way. Yeah, in an innovative way. Yeah, our customers push us to innovate and push us to drive the solutions that they really need to succeed in their business. And that's ultimately what we're here for. It's an exciting time of, of disruption and, and commoditization at some level, more cores, cheaper, faster, smaller, sure. with growth and innovation sure. at the same time. Well, that's what I said earlier. There's always this hype boom, bust cycle, yeah. and you get this commoditization, and everybody thinks, well, if that commoditizes, what happens next? But there's always that next level of innovation, so we're quite excited about continuing that trend. Well, thanks for sharing your insight here on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Uh, Executive Vice President of the products teams here at Oracle, sharing the vision inside theCUBE, and go to crowdpages.co slash OOW15 for all the videos, all the trending conversations in the crowd, trending stories, and of course, all the videos, and the social network based around Oracle Open World. That's from theCUBE's team. We'll be right back with more here on Howard Street after this short break. Thank you.